Seraphine has to be one of the most broken champions in League of Legends to exist. She does everything. She does damage, she does healing, she has CC, and she's quite tanky to top that off. In this video, you're going to learn how to play Seraphine. We're going to specifically focus on ADC, but a lot of the tips will also be universal. You're going to learn things ranging from how to make your ult invisible, combos, build paths, how to play landing phase, and how to team fight. This video was in collaboration with Coco Bob. He is probably the best Seraphine player in EU West. He peaked Challenger a couple months ago, and he is a Seraphine main. All right, so let's dive right in and ask, what does Seraphine do that other picks can't? Seraphine is the only champ that can build mage damage items whilst providing more shielding and healing power than the enemy support. She really has big AP scalings on her skills. For example, her double Q deals 195% of AP. The first reason to pick her on ADC roll over support is that she unlocks so, so much more power through farming and her range and early wave clear make it possible for her to get to a late game where she becomes an absolute monster. She could be blind pick in every game as she doesn't have to rely on any hard counters. And on top of that, she can be played in three roles, which makes enemies confused about her positions. Coco Bob swaps with allies constantly and first picks her every game. As for draft, Seraphine can fit into almost any composition if your team already has some AD damage on other roles. You should never draft too much AD. The ideal team comp for a Seraphine is a tanky top such as Zac, Mundo, Sek, Cassante, etc. A bruiser slash carry jungler like Wukong, Kindred, Graves, or Udyr, Zac, Maokai, etc. Mid is flexible, but any teamfight oriented champ is really good. Scaling or a roaming support, such as Senna, Sona, Karma, or Ash, Tarm, Kench, Pike, Blitzcrank, Nautilus. And now the question becomes, how do you approach laning phase most of the time? There are three lane scenarios. There's a good lane. You have an Ash, Karma, Nami support against a Lulu or another Enchanter plus Vayne, Cog, Varus. Any ADC that can't outpush Seraphine. In this situation, you will dominate lane via hard pushing the wave since the beginning. Push first wave and ward river bush. After this, continue continue pushing and poking the enemies under their tower whilst they try and farm. Try to track the enemy jungler and back off when he's near. Don't be greedy. Farm up, kill enemies if possible. You will have pro for Drake and river fights. Swap with mid right after you get Leandris. Now we have the average game. You have a Nautilus Pike, Blitzcrank, or someone who wants to roam against any ADC plus another roaming support. In this case, you don't push and you hold the wave near your turret and farm up. You let your support roam and when he roams, your only goal is to not get dived and safely farm near tower. When your team wants to fight Drake or River, push the wave and help them. Swap with mid at around 15 minutes. Now we have the situation of a hard game. You have a scaling support like a Sona or a Senna against lane bullies like Nami Lucian, Samira Nautilus or a Lux Caitlyn. In this case, take resolve runes and TP. Your main goal is to just farm as much as possible while not dying. Always ward River and back bushes. Avoid getting dived even if if you lose farm, it will be fine as you hard outscale the enemies if you're not dying. Swap with mid when enemies destroy your bot tower. After this, always stay close to the team and farm up. Another useful little tip that we'll cover a bit later in the video as well is when farming in lane, it's best to hit the whole wave with E and then clear with double Q. If you want to hold the wave near your tower, you can double E the whole wave before it crashes into your tower. So how do you approach team fighting or skirmishes with Seraphine? In team fights, always stay behind your melee allies. Don't step up too far, but stay in range of W with them. Before a team fight begins, zone enemies with long range Q and E, throw your spells into bushes to check if anyone's there. Save your ult and wait for someone to land some form of crowd control first. Only after that, cast R. Seraphine's R can be so easily dodged, so only do it if you use R flash or if enemies can't dodge it. We will cover more on combos and this will come up later when we cover that in the video. Before we touch on that though, let's cover what what rune choices are best for Seraphine ADC? The only viable core rune for Seraphine is Airy. It gives more consistent and even more damage on average than Comet, whilst also helping you shield your team more. Here are the best runes in order. The best page, which you can see on screen now, is an Airy Precision page. It's good for every game, you will never run out of mana in team fights, and you scale really well. The second best page is to take for hard lanes. And you can see this is an airy resolve page. Only take it against like Nami Lucian, Samira Nort, Caitlyn Lux. TP and bone plating will help you survive early. And revitalize has good synergy with your W. Now the third page is a page for the Rod of Ages build. And you can see on screen now that you take airy plus inspiration. You get free boots and it will let you build Rod of Ages faster. 
Cookies will help you in lane and they give 140 mana which converts to around 5 AP when you buy Seraph's Embrace. Okay, and now there's a secret build that I'm going to share with you. Sarah has a secret burst page in which you can take against very squishy comps, which is first strike precision you can see on screen now. In this build, you take TP and you rush Ludens and go Lich Bane second. It's an interesting variation in which Coco Bob uses when he's carrying his diamond friends. This is when he really wants to carry and shock enemies with the burst. You go Lich Brain, group with team, stack passive, and spam autos on enemies from 1k range. It procs first strike really well. Sadly, it's bad in high elo, and this is only really useful to have fun on the champ. Now, for summoner spells, take ghosts with roaming support to help them in the early game fiestas. Use it whenever any fight begins, so it resets and lasts longer. Buy early Ionian boots for less cooldown. With the scaling support, take teleport to make sure that even if something goes wrong, you can still TP back to the lane without losing XP and gold from the wave. You can delay Ionian Boots until after you get Leandries. For mid Seraphine, always go TP. Coco Bob rarely takes any other summoner spells, only if his support asks him to. For example, some Ash support players take Ghost, so he takes Heal instead. He highly recommends trying out Ghost on Seraphine, as it will allow you to live longer in fights, chase, kite enemies, reach enemies out of range, and keep up with your team to keep them alive. Now for build order, it's QWE. Now a lot of people max E, but in one of Riot's patches, they killed Seraphine's E max. So now her only viable skill order is QWE. With levels, her W shields and heals more and cooldown is reduced whilst also leveling up her E. Only gives you about 10 flat damage and 10 mana cost, which is obviously worse than maxing W second. Now similar to the runes, there's three major build paths on Seraphine. The best build will be Leandri's Seraph's Rabadon. The Rod of Ages build, which is suggested only for mid, but I think it's moving its way into ADC, which is Rod of Ages, Seraphs and Rabadon. And the burst build with first strike, which mentioned earlier is Luden's Lich Bane Seraphs. Regardless of the build, purchase tier and dark seal after first back for each build three mentioned items are always core if you stack 10 dark steel sacks buy medjai's last slot items are always situational taking some defensive items on seraphine is great as you already have enough ap rhyalize frozen heart versus ad force of nature versus ap or void staff chemtech depends on the situation I recommend looking through some items which you like personally, which fit your playstyle, and actually having a look at which items, the defensive items you like, and in which situations you will take them. Okay, now let's cover some combo mechanics. As mentioned previously, whilst farming, it's best to hit the whole way with E and then double clear with Q. For poking, throw E then double Q plus W to stack notes and give an auto from a big range. Okay, now in team fights, always save your double cast for W. Spam it off cooldown. If you catch enemies with R and you have a team nearby, always do double E though, so your team can finish them off. But your double cast of W is insane and it's basically your best team fighting ability, apart from your ult. You want to be able to keep everyone alive for so long and then cast through your abilities to cast your double cast W again. So there are situational things like you can hold your double E for champs like Ash, Senna, wait until they hit their root and stun and then follow up with double E plus Q. Nami plus Seraphine have a very interesting mechanic. If Nami buffs Seraphine, her E will instant root stun. Works just like Rallies on her. Same goes for Hextech Dragon Soul. Seraphine has a lot of interesting mechanics such as you can make her ult invisible and you can cast her E in different directions. You can make her E as one wave. Basically, let's go through those. So the first thing that you're going to want to nail down is R flash. Now, this isn't that hard. You just want to R and then flash and it will follow the direction of your flash and your R looks like it's going to hit and then you flash and then it hits. Now, this is then followed up by you can make your ult invisible if you flash right at the last second of this animation. If you flash right at the very last second, now this is very, very, very difficult. But if you can nail it, you can basically do it every game and it's really OP. You can make your whole ult invisible. I'm going to put on screen what it looks like for the enemies, um, just so you can see. What? It's invisible! It was invisible! And now there's other interesting mechanics that like you can cast her E in different directions. If you double cast E and flash right after Seraph spins once on her wheelchair, your E projectiles will separate and go in different directions. Coco Bob has a video on all these interactions, which I'm going to link below in the description if you go and click on it now. Highly recommend watching this. 
For the final part of this video, I asked Coca Bob if there's any common misconceptions about Seraphine in which she hopes didn't exist. The first one he said is, she is not Sona. She does not operate the same way as Sona, so he wished people would stop acting as if this champ is the same. Second one is, a lot of solo queue players, when they see Seraphine, they pick Senna or Sona, even though they can't play them. If your support doesn't know what to pick with Seraphine, tell them to just pick Ash, Karma, or any hooker. Seraphine synergizes better with teammates who are at least not first timing their champs. The final misconception is, is people think that Seraphine is really easy. Maybe it's easy to play her support and brainlessly spam her W, but playing her ADC on mid is like a whole different champion. You have to control so many things. Her mana is really weak in early game. You have to manage her passive properly to get the best of her. Her spells are really slow and easy to dodge, and you are a fully skill shot dependent champion. If you miss at least one of her spells, it's really hard to do damage. And the final question, the most important question I asked Coco Bob was what is your favorite Seraphine skin? And he said, Rising Star. Her sounds are really loud, especially if you have like 100 CDR in late game and it makes enemies blow up in all chat. Now, some final things I wanted to say. First of all, thank you Coco Bob for helping me. And I know this video took so long to make. And that also goes out to the people who watch this channel. I'm sorry this channel has been taking so long to upload literally anything. I've been really busy with IRL stuff. Um, I wanted to make this video as my first video back just because I think Seraphine is the most underrated pick. I even got interviewed at MSI and by XL Esports and I told them I really want to see Seraphine played. I feel like she is probably the most broken ADC. I want Seraphine to be picked bot. You can see it in her win rate in solo queue. I feel like this champ is not as difficult to learn as other champs for the win rate she desires. Like, I don't think she's as difficult as Karthus to learn and her win rate is on par with him. I just don't think people are picking this enough. Yeah, I think she's really OP and I just went to make this video. Also, I'm making shorts. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to see what I'm like. I'm experimenting with shorts on this channel. Um, head over and have a look at those if you like, like sort of highlight edits, things like that. Um, yeah, but yeah, this is my first video back. I think I'm going to be making more. But as I've done with this channel in the past, I'm not going to make promises just because IRL stuff is really difficult to manage. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Like and subscribe. Peace.